again and welcome back to my kitchen. We are almost to the end of March and I would once again like to talk to you about the Snug Group on Facebook. That is S-N-U-G, Canning to Preserve Our Future. My wonderful friend Amber May is the founder of um, this canning group, but I want to tell you we are so much more than canning. We are about food preservation in any form that it comes in and um, independence, food independence, all right? So Amber, this past month and uh, throughout the month of March, um, came up with a fantastic idea about talking about sourdough. And sourdough is one of those things that, you know, so many of us have probably known about for uh, decades, you know, uh, generations. Uh, before us have done sourdough, but it seems to be growing in popularity once again. I'm sorry, I just touched my hot stove and it made me jump. <laughs> I'm multitasking like we all do in the kitchen. <laughs> anyway, um, so when you go on this sourdough journey, um, as most of you know, uh, after you feed your starter, uh, a lot of times you have discard, okay? And we all are finding wonderful and creative ways of using discard. Now, Amber, throughout this entire month, has um, contributed so many amazing sourdough discard recipes. It has whew, just literally blown my mind. She has amazing recipes, all right? Her canning recipes are amazing. Her, um, her uh, fermenting recipes have been amazing. Her... Um, brews and, and drink recipes are amazing. You guys, she's just kind of like a one-stop shop type person, and she shares all of these things with us. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get past that, and I want to get onto the subject today, and that is sourdough starter. Now, uh, sourdough starter can be, you know, discard can be used in so many ways, and most of the common ways for all of us to use our sourdough discard is in like a simple muffin recipe or a cookie recipe or maybe pancakes or whatever, you know. Well, you can only eat so many of those, right? <laughs> and so sourdough crackers are just something that have interested me for quite a while. It's super simple. It takes three tablespoons of melted butter, one tablespoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of garlic powder, and one cup of sourdough discard. So I'm going to page you down and I'm just going to show you how easy this is to mix up and do. So I have my three tablespoons of melted butter and then what I like to do is I like to get my uh, garlic, no oh, there it is, garlic powder and you know what I forgot my one tablespoon measure, measuring uh, spoon. I will be right back. You guys, this is what happens when you're multitasking. You forget things. How are you supposed to measure if you don't have a measuring spoon or a measuring cup? But anyway, so now I have my measuring spoon. And we are just going to, to those three tablespoons of melted butter, we are going to add one tablespoon of garlic powder. All right? And I like to give that just a little bit of a stir. And then we are going to go ahead and we are going to add our one tablespoon of olive oil. And you guys, when I say this is so quick and easy, you're just going to be astounded. So let's get one tablespoon of olive oil into this mixture. Make sure that I got all of that good olive oil in there and give that a stir. Stir that up good. Looks good. And now we are going to take that wonderful sourdough discard that so many of us have hanging around and lurking in our refrigerators and measure out one cup of sourdough uh, starter discard. Now this is unfed discard and my, you know, my sourdough might be a little bit thicker than yours. I know, uh, you know, a lot of people do it in a lot of different ways. The thinner your sour are, oh, sorry, I've got to put my weight on here. Um, the thinner your discard is, the easier these are going to spread for you. 
Mine is a pretty thick discard. Um, that's just how I do my solar dough. My, my starter is just kind of a thicker, oh, kind of like a thick pancake consistency. Um, but it does not matter whatever consistency your sourdough starter is, this recipe is going to work just fantastic for you. So we get that one cup of starter in that wonderful seasoning and oil and just kind of get that stirred up without making a mess. <clears throat> like I said, mine is a little bit on the thicker side. Yours might be a little thinner and it might mix up a little bit easier for you. But this is all there is to it, you guys. I swear, this recipe takes you maybe a minute, a minute to get mixed up and measured out, and then you are literally ready to bake it. There is no trick at all to this, super simple. So now what we are going to do is <clears throat> get your very largest cookie tray and you can see that my paper has already been used quite a few times get your largest cookie tray because the key is <coughs> the thinner that you can get this better batter the better it is so the thinner you can spread the batter the better it is the crisper these crack crackers come out but Take and line your cookie uh, sheet with just a piece of parchment paper and then go ahead and get your batter onto that parchment paper. All right, I'm going to get some of these dirty things out of my way. And then just spread that batter out evenly to entirely cover your cookie sheet. And like I said, the thinner your starter is, um, the easier time you're going to have with this. It will probably spread really, really simple. Mine is a little bit thicker and a little bit stiffer, just because that's how I prefer my starter to be. And then I take one of these handy-dandy little table scrapers. They call this a table scraper. But anything that you would have in your kitchen, even maybe even a clean... Um, child's ruler, uh, just whatever you have where you can just take and even out this batter throughout your tray. And you don't have to have perfectly even edges, all right? The edges really are not going to matter at all, but try to just get it distributed as evenly as possible because you want this to cook as evenly as possible so that everything is uniformly crisp. I'm going to turn my pan around because I've got quite a bit of batter on my, uh, my table scraper right now that I just want to reincorporate into this side of the pan. Pull a little bit from that side. And get it just as even as possible. All right, looks fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and scrape the rest of my batter off of my table scraper. And just get that incorporated, just that little excess 
just get that incorporated into that thin corner on my sheet. There we are. All right, now is where the fun really, really starts. You can use everything bagel seasoning on this and um, go ahead and season it. Sprinkle on your everything bagel really, really um, heavily if you want. I have found this garlic and herb spice that I just really love for these crackers. And I just go ahead and I sprinkle on my garlic and herb mixture. And you can put the seasonings of your choice on this. Now, my sourdough starter is made with completely um, whole wheat flour, okay? And what these remind me of are those little manufactured crackers called wheat thins, all right? When these come out of the oven, they are just crispy, and they just remind me of a wheat thin. But anyway, so I have sprinkled on my garlic and herb mixture, and then I really like to sprinkle on some salt. And, of course, all of these toppings, all of these seasonings on top are just completely up to you. The everything bagel seasoning is amazing on these crackers. And that is all to it. We are going to stick this into a 325-degree preheated oven for 10 minutes. And then I will be back to show you the next step. Into the oven they go. And we'll set the timer. And I'll be back in 10 minutes. All right, guys. So 10 minutes is up. And what I really like to do is I just like to completely remove my parchment paper onto a flat surface, all right? Because while you're cutting these, if you have a cookie sheet with edges, it's really hard to get all the way to the edges. Hopefully we're down. Yep. <coughs> and I cut these just as small as what those uh, store-bought crackers wheat thins would be. That's the size that I cut them into. So just literally like little, little bite-sized crackers is what I do. And then pour them across. This is going to go back onto that cookie sheet. And back into that 325 degree oven for another 20 minutes. And when those are done baking, I will be back to show the amazing results. All right. So, at the 20 minute mark here, let's turn that off. What I'm going to do is I am going to test these crackers. Let's see if I have, oh. Well, I guess we're gonna have to use this one here. Um, we're gonna test these crackers just seriously, just with your finger just to see if they're crisp, all right? And some of them around the edges are ready to take off of the pan. Some of them are still a little on the soft side. So what I do at this point in time is I just remove the crackers that I know are crispy and done, and then I stick the pan back into the oven for a little bit longer to crisp up the ones that are in the middle of the pan that maybe need a little bit more baking time, all right? And you know, and this is why I say the thinner and more even that you can do it, the better it is. Then you can get the whole pan done just all at once. But um, that doesn't always necessarily happen, just depending on the consistency of your actual sourdough starter discard. But my edge pieces are definitely done already. Drop those on the tray. 
you know, maybe what I'll do is instead of just trying to use the spatula, I'm just going to do it with my fingers here and get those outside ones that are nice and crisp. Get those off of the pan. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return, oh, that's nice and crispy too. We're going to return the rest of them that aren't as crispy to my finger tip or fingernail cut. That one's actually pretty good. No, nope, that's soft, 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 partially soft. Just test, test each one with your fingernail, and you'll be able to just very easily tell whether these are crispy and done or whether they need a little bit more baking. That one feels good. I think I'm going to leave that one for the additional baking time. I'm going to take that one off. All right. And then just stick the ones that you do not feel are crisp enough yet. You just stick them back into that 325 degree oven for another 5 or 10 minutes, all right, until these feel really nice and crisp to your fingernail. All right, so we'll let those other ones bake for a little while. I'm going to spread these out evenly so that they cool, and I will be back in just a few more minutes. All right, guys, so we have allowed the last few crackers to bake for about another 10 minutes, and they are looking golden, crispy, delicious. And so we're just going to get them off of our baking sheet to cool. for a minute. Alright guys, look at how absolutely beautiful these are. So I'm just going to take just a random cracker here and get you aimed up. And listen to this. Hopefully you can hear it over the canner. But these things are just crispy and delicious with the garlic and the oil and all of those wonderful seasonings that we put on top. And here we go. Hopefully, like I said, you can hear it over the canner. Mmm. Oh, my goodness. You've got such crispy deliciousness. Mm. So yummy. Oh, you really, you got to try these things. If you're like us and you do sourdough all the time, this is seriously an amazing way of using up your sourdough starter discard. So quick, so easy. No effort at all. Mmm. And they're very addictive. <laughs> Salty, garlicky, crispy. Goodness. Now, after these have completely cooled, what I do is I store them in just a clean uh, mason jar, um, bulk or whatever, canning jar with a lid screwed on tight. These stay fresh and good, even without vacuum sealing, for well over a week. If they last that long and your family doesn't gobble them up sooner. This is seriously one of the best ways that I have found to use up sourdough discard in a way that it doesn't take me a, a, a really long time to, uh, you know, prepare the dough or roll anything out or all of those things or proof it, whatever else. Just so quick and easy. They are absolutely amazing. Give them a try in your home like I did in ours. It's a good thing. I promise you. God bless you all, and happy Canada, everybody.